I am going to show you the experiment measurement of frequency guide wavelength and wave doubler in macro test bench in rectangular wave guide. So this is the setup for macro test bench. Here you can just go through the block diagram. The first block is crystal power supply. Crystal power supply. Next is reflex crystal oscillator, isolator, variable attenuator, frequency meter, and detector and CR. So this is the basic setup. For the addition setup, we are using this is slotted section. This is movable short and it is tunable probe detector and again you can connect it to CRO later on. So the experiment is basically about uh, the frequency measurement. Frequency measurement. Here frequency you are going to find out in two methods. In the first method we are going to use this instrument. This is called direct reading frequency meter. In the second method we are going to find out the frequency by using slotted section this instrument here in DRF or direct reading frequency meter we are going to get frequency directly in the slotted section we are initially going to find out the lambda and later on we are going to derive the frequency ultimately our aim is to match these two frequencies so this, that is our experiment here the experiment is basically a frequency measurement frequency of what microwave signal so microwave signal you know that it is a very wide range 3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz so what is our setup is limited to x band so x stands for the frequency 8.2 gigahertz to 12.4 gigahertz so whatever we measure the frequency out of this setup that should lies in the range of 8.2 giga to 12.4 gigahertz so this is the band x band and our setup microwave test bench is limited to X band only. So this is about the frequency concept. So basically experiment as I told it is a frequency measurement. First initial setup will do and measure frequency by using this instrument direct and frequency meter. Later on the same frequency and we have to derive by using this instrument floated section. KPS Clistron power supply. You have to maintain these knobs. So here you have to keep this a modulation switch to the AM position and frequency maximum amplitude also maximum only the parameter you have to keep minimum is that is B molds B molds at the minimum position and repeller rolls at the maximum position and these two switch will be in off and this selector switch will be in the off condition this is the initial condition by keeping this at the cluster power supply you can switch on the Clistron power supply. Before switching on this, you must need this cooling fan because your clistron is uh, going to be heated while conducting the experiment. To cool this clistron exter externally, we are using this fan, cooling fan. The external cooling fan, we can say. So I'll switch on the power supply. So I'll switch on the KPS. Initially, you have to note down the parameters. Here. Initially, you have to note down the parameters. Just one sample case we have written with the pencil. Just observation. What is the observation? So you have to note down beam modes, beam current, ripple voltage, and input voltage. See here. First step is you have to keep to the V position. That is V modes. V stands for voltage. That is for V modes. It is a digital display, it is there, 244 beam volts it is there. So next coming to the C, C stands for current, that is a beam current. The current it, it is always in the range of 10 to 20 milliamp. It, it will automatically comes. The cluster draws current about 10 current in between 10 to 20 milliamp. So 14 milliamps we are getting. Current it is in milliamps, voltage it is in volts. Next next position is RE peripheral voltage. That is come that comes around 253 volts. Here you have to note down this observation V modes, V current, triple voltage and about this input voltage you remember this to get this voltage you have to go to the CRO to get that input voltage and to push your cluster into oscillating mode you have to this is very important point concentrate here reduce your repeller voltage from the maximum to the minimum side so that you will get one square there and stop it there. 
So one more time I will show you. Repeller voltage is maximum position. Reduce this repeller from maximum to the minimum size slowly. We will get to a square wave and stop it there. So this is called a input. Uh, this is actually the square wave detected signal of microwave modulated signal. The amplitude of this you can note down as a input voltage. So what is the amplitude now? It is the position at once. Amplitude of this is 1, 2, 3. 3 volts you are getting now at this time. I am taking 3 volts. Here, here it is 3 volts. It is coming. Next, what is the next step is it is important step. Frequency obtained from the frequency meter. Now I have to use this. This is the first method. We are going to measure the frequency by using this frequency meter. So this is the direct reading frequency meter instrument. Here there is a step. Rotate this plunger and get a dip on the signal. See here I will show you. So you have to tune this plunger clockwise and anti-clockwise. See that there is a dip in the signal. See. Dip is coming at the signal. Further if you move the plunger, there you won't you won't get any dip there. If you go in the reverse or reverse direction, you will get dip at any at particular point and if you go also reverse also, you will not get any dip there. Dip occurs at only one point where the frequency matches. See, it is a dip. So procedure is tune the plunger, get the dip and read the frequency. Frequency reading is very simple. Here it is a vertical thin line and two horizontal lines are there, dark lines. You have to consider the scale that is lying between these two horizontal lines coinciding with those with this vertical line. Now the frequency is the coinciding vertical line is here it is coinciding 9.5951.52. It is a line coinciding after that 9.51. That means 9.515 gigahertz is the frequency. 9.515 gigahertz gigahertz is the frequency so here one more time i will show you so this is a signal square wave tune this plunger get a dip and see that this is vertical thin line and the scale you have to consider that is lying between these two horizontal dark lines this is one dark line this is dark line the scale lying in between these two here it is 9.5 9.52 9.51 5.15 so the first method of frequency measurement is over now now the same frequency you have to derive with the help of this plotted section plotted section i will show you this is the continuation part uh, in the first method we have measured the frequency by using this frequency meter so now I will remove this detector and insert the plotted section. I will remove with everything in the same on condition. I will remove this detector now. Insert plotted section. Now I will take output from tunable probe detector. So this is the waveform we are getting, the same square wave. Amplitude wise it may be reduced but no problem. But you have to take the difference of two frequencies. Yes. So this is called movable carriage and this is main scale and it is vernier scale. So this is slotted section, it is tunable probe det detector and it is a movable shot. At the one end of slotted section we have given input. At the other end of slotted section this we have put this movable shot. We have inserted. The main uh, significance of this movable shot is it is having reflection coefficient 1. Whatever signal it is coming to it, it is going to be reflect. So here incident waves and reflected waves together forms a standing wave pattern. So in standing wave pattern you will get two voltages comes one after the other on voltage maxima and minima voltages. You are getting this maxima and minima voltage pattern. 
here you have to consider the difference between two consecutive maxima suppose one maxima if i taking this other minima you have to skip and go for the next maxima voltage you have to take this you have to consider like this i'll show you the readings first i'll keep to any one maxima voltage like this here so first let this point be called as a d1 D1. D1 is equal to MS1, MSR1 plus CVD into LC. LC is least count 0.01 for vernier calipers. MSR means main scale reading. This is main scale and it is a vernier scale. So here first you just adjust this carriage to any one maxima point. Suppose let me take as this as a maxima point and note down this MSR1. MSR means main scale reading. This is vernier scale. This is main scale. This is vernier 0 coinciding with the main scale that is MSR. Here in this case, it is you have to see in this direction 9.1 to 9.3 is the MSR now. So then CVD means coinciding vernier division from 0 to 10. Any one division it is coinciding with the main scale. From 0 to for CVD you have to check the vernier scale from 0 to 10. Any one division it is coinciding with the main scale. Here in this case it is coming around 5, I think 5. So here, this is sample reading taken before 10.5 MSR plus CVD6 into LC01 like that D2. But for, for to get take D2 point, observe here, you have to move this carriage. Next what you will get is minima voltage, you have to skip that minima, next go for next maximum and stop it there. So you have to consider two consecutive maxima voltage difference. Now just this point as a D2. D2 you calculate in the same manner as I told for D1, MSR2 plus CVD20 LC. After noting down these two readings, just you go for guided wavelength that is lambda, lambda G is equal to 2 into D1 difference of D2. Or you can say that D2 minus D1. Which one is higher, you have to detect it from the lower value. Cut off wavelength is lambda c is equal to 2 into a. a is nothing but width of yogurt that is 2.3 centimeter constant. Here, if we measure this from here to here, it will be 2.3 centimeter wider width of yogurt. Cut off wavelength. Next, lambda g, not you have to calculate by using this expression 1 by lambda naught square is equal to 1 by lambda g square plus 1 by lambda c square. Finally, you can calculate frequency f is equal to c divided by lambda naught. With the help of this expression, you can calculate frequency. C is nothing but velocity of light 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second or else 3 into 10 raised to 10. You have to convert this to centimeter, 3 into 10 raised to 10 centimeter per second. Finally, you can get this frequency. So, this frequency it should match with the frequency earlier what you have measured with the help of frequency meter. Earlier you have measured frequency, frequency from the frequency meter. So, this frequency and this frequency both should be matched. This is how you have to take the readings. Next, coming to the measurement of VSWR, V max and V minimum, you have to take, you can roughly take like this. So, this is the maximum voltage in the transmission line. The amplitude multiplies this value that will give voltage. Minimum, you can take the minimum voltages. This is the minimum voltage. 0.2 into 0.8 it will come. So you can note down V max, V minimum. Square root of V max plus square root of V minimum will give VSA voltage standing wave ratio. So this is the completion of the experiment. While switching off the power supply, again we have not touched anything here, just maximize this repeller voltage again. So everything will be in the same position as it was earlier and take this switch to back to and switch it up. Keep fan running another 5 to 10 minutes for cooling of this one. So this is the end.